So for anybody that doesn't know, this is Grace. Um, Grace and I are juniors. Um, and exciting news, we're going to be roommates next year um, at Benedictine. So super exciting. Um, and Grace is just such an amazing and pure and sweet person. And so I'm so excited that she'll be able to present to you guys today. So Grace. Oh, shoot, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, OK, so I want to talk to you guys a bit about the sacrifice. Specifically, which is uh, the Grace. Uh, yeah, so what do we think about the Eucharist? Um, so we say that Jesus is like a sign, and a sign of God. Like the Eucharist is a sign of God's love, but he's not just a sign, he actually is his love. Um, can any of you guys give me a sign of something you looked for in your life? Or maybe if you've like prayed for God for a sign, like what's, what's something we could ask God for a sign? Yeah, Lizzie. Which college to go to? Yeah, that's a huge. We're talking about that with favorite one. Yeah, we definitely all ask for like signs of like where to go to college, or I don't know. All of you guys like chose where to go to high school, or sometimes like a sign of oh God, like show me like which team I'm gonna make, or if I should like join this team or or like this club, or uh, maybe maybe like we want a sign of if our crush likes us. You know, but like, what, what could these signs be? They might be like something they do, or a way that they go out of their way and to, to be with you, just like to be near you. Even if it's not like a full-on conversation, or hanging out with you all the time. Maybe it's just like a, oh, look, they're, you know, they're across the hall. Like they're, they know where you are. Like, you just feel kind of nice in that way. Maybe it's a little touch. It doesn't have to be, you know, full like little things, but even just kind of like bumping into you or whatever. I mean, you can think of like little kids on the playground, they're trying to, you know, just like tease each other, like push each other out or whatever. But as long as we definitely still do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be a little touch or something they say, it's like the way that they look at you. Sometimes we don't see these signs and it's, we get discouraged, but that doesn't mean that whatever we're looking for doesn't exist. So like, if this person, you know, if they don't look at us in a certain way, like in this classroom, like it doesn't mean if you don't get some sign that you're going to like make this tea, it doesn't mean that you're not going to make it, or whatever it is. And that the signs aren't the full reality. But we do look for them. And so it is really nice when we do find them. But, uh, yeah, when we don't see these signs, or when we do, we have to come back to the question of who do I love and who loves me? All these signs, even the good ones, from good people are just signs. At the end of the day, all we want is to be loved and to know in the bottom of our hearts that we're loved. That's all we want. If you think about at the end of your day, something that I was talking to someone about recently, it's like an exercise that I'm trying to do in my own life. You know, our faith is a lot of these big moments, but also a lot of the little things. So like, okay, at the end of each day, just take like 10 minutes. Which sometimes it's hard because sometimes I do homework until the very end of the day and then I like go to bed when I'm exhausted. But it's like, no, take 10 minutes at the end of the day and just go back through your day. And I don't know if you guys have heard of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Um, I went to a Jesuit high school, so if any of you guys have heard of the Jesuit order of priests, like he's their founder. He's super cool, he's a Spanish priest, and he is looking to Ignatian spirituality. He has a lot of really cool things. And one of his things is uh, the exam prayer. Which is like at the end of the day, which so we would do this in high school is where I learned it. Um, but at the end of the day, you go through and like look back at your day, like what happened? And then you kind of look at like, okay, what did I do well today? What did I struggle with? And then what can I do better? How can I help? And so something I'm trying to get back into is yeah, going back through my day, like what, not only what did I do, what did I do well, what did I struggle with, but also like what were the thoughts on me? Like, what did I think of people? What did I see? Um, like, when I was doing these things, like, what were the thoughts in my mind? Like, was I doing this out of love? Like, was I showing other people these signs of love? Because, like, I know that I want to receive that, and so I also have to return them to other people. Because that's what we're all looking for. And you guys are starting to get to the age where we're going to start to see that people aren't always perfect, and they don't always love us the way that, they, that we deserve. That can be the older people that we look up to. That can be our parents. I think as we get older, we start to see our parents more as like real people. Even our teachers, our coaches, like all these people that we've always looked up to, and maybe in some senses, like seen them as perfect. 
we're going to start to see, like, oh, they're human. They're also just trying to figure life out. And we all have so many questions. And, like, it's okay that not everyone in this world loves you perfectly. Like, everyone is going to mess up. Like, we're going to mess up when it comes to loving other people. And that's okay. But have you ever looked at or thought about Jesus on the cross before? And, like, yes, we have the cross there. But how many times have you actually just, like, looked at the cross, just, like, sat in front of it, and just, like, stared at it for a good long while, like, really thought about it, just contemplated it? Okay, who is that? Like, that's a real thing. Like, Jesus actually died on the cross. Like, who is that, and what does that mean? That he was human, and that he died on the cross. Like, everything that led up to that. And sometimes we look so hard for a sign that we don't recognize the thing we're actually looking for once we find it. And so not only does Jesus give us these signs of his love, but he is what we're looking for. Jesus is beaten and carries the cross up the hill that he will die. So when we want just a little touch from someone just to know that they love us, he told us, take and eat. This is my body. He gives us his whole body to come into our body. What do we want to hear that we're loved? God gives us the, the Bible, which is the whole entire history of man. We have these stories in his words saying how much he loves us, like all of these examples. He came to perform miracles and to heal us, to teach us and tell us just how much he loves us. And when we just want to be recognized, he sees to the depths of our heart. And sometimes we don't want anyone to see that much of us. If we're being honest, but God does see us and He wants to be let in. When we receive the Eucharist, He comes to our He comes into our bodies physically because we were, uh, consume Him. But it's also letting Him into our hearts. And again, it's not always easy. There, I can think of so many times in my life where it's hard. Like we want love so much, but sometimes it's more. It feels more like the desire to be recognized. Like I just want someone to see me and like enough to like, say hi to me. We can hang out with friends. But like, once it gets to like the deep stuff, I'm like, no, time, time for me to back away. I don't want you to see the messy or vulnerable parts of my heart because I'm, I don't even want to see them. Right, so, yeah, I can think of so many times in my life where, yeah, I'm trying to back away from this love when it's so close to me, whether that's coming from God or from other people. I can think of even just a few months back in February, I was at SEEK, which is, if you guys have been to like Steubenville or it's, just a big conference with like Catholic students from like across the country that they put on. So it's like this really big retreat. And so it wasn't with like everyone from across the country, but there were people from like Nebraska and like Kansas schools. So there were a good like 700 people or whatever. But this big retreat. And we were at Adoration. And like leading into the week, I was like, I'm praying about it, like talking to people. I was like, I'm really excited for this retreat. I feel like there should be like something big that happens because it's a big retreat, so something big should happen. And I was like, I don't know, there's not really anything like super big on my heart that I need to like, process or like bring up. Like I think, I think I'm doing pretty good. Um, so then I was just praying. I was like, okay, God, like, yeah, just reveal to me what's in my heart. So like whatever that might be, like I don't, I don't really know if I want to know, but also I do want to know. So like whatever, whatever is deep down in my heart that I don't recognize yet, just like let me know. It's like reveal it to me. And then as the week went on, and I was like, uh, actually, <laughs> if you don't want to look that deep in my heart, like, that's okay. Um, and just realizing, like, I had this, uh, I was, yeah, I was praying about it, and I had this image in my mind where Jesus and I were just kind of like, he was just giving me, like, a big one, you know, where you can, like, put your arms around the person. And then he kind of, like, backed away, but it was still just, like, holding me, and he was just, like, staring into my eyes, like, you know when someone, like, stares into your eyes, it's like, Feel like there you see like the depths of your soul you're like, ooh, okay. Like that's all. But also, like, wow. Like there's almost not even words to say. And it was one of those looks, and then I could look everywhere but in his eyes. Like I could not look him back in the eyes. I was like, I know you're looking at me, but like I don't want you to see me. I don't want God to see me. But like I know that he does, and I know that all he wants is for me to just look. Jesus, but I can't do that right now. I don't know what it is that I'm trying to hide from you. I feel like I've opened my heart to you completely, and I know that you love me, and I know you've seen all, seen all this stuff. Like, I know these things, but, like, I'm so scared for you to see me. 
Like, I want you to, but I'm scared. Because, like, what does that mean if you actually, if I actually let you see? If I let you into every part of my heart? And so then just kind of, like, finally, like, going into the weekend like this, and I'm like, oh, okay. Like, definitely trying to avoid this. But also, like, you know, we'll see. So we're going along, and all the talks are really good. And then I go to adoration, and I'm, like, crying. And I'm, like, during adoration, and it's just, like, a mess. And I'm like, oh, okay, like, you know, I want Jesus to see all these things. But also, I'm still really scared. And so then, finally, the priest is, like, coming out with the monsters. And so he's processing around with Jesus. And then, so I'm just kneeling down with all these people. And I'm already, like, kind of crying. And then the priest stops, like, right in front of our section. So, like, not just in front of, like, me, but in front of, like, all these people. And then just in that moment, I was like, like, he sees me. And I was able to stare, like, right back at him. And, like, no one could see eyeballs, like, he's a physical human being. But I was able to stare Jesus right in the face in the Eucharist. Wow. Like, you're looking right at me, and you see everything about me, and I'm looking right back at you. And then I was trying to pray. I was like, okay, Jesus, like, where do you go? Like, where do you want me? And he was like, I want you to see. And I was like, I'm here. And Oh, okay. Just like being present sometimes. Like sometimes we just need to sit in God's love, like right where He has us at the moment. And like, yes, our love needs to be active, but first we need to receive God's love so then we can go out and share. <laughs> and so just having that moment, like, let me just sit here, right in God's love, and just let Him see me. And then return that gaze. And then as the prayer went on, and I was like, Jesus, what do you want me to do? He's like, come follow me. It's like, how do I do that? He's like, spend time with me. Like, okay. I don't know, really know what that means, but, you know, and like, what exactly that's going to look like in my life. But I'm just going to keep, like, keep going, keep trying, keep learning, and just spend more time with Jesus. And so it's not easy to build this relationship with Jesus and to always follow him. But it comes from a relationship. It takes time. All Jesus wants to do is to talk to us and love us. And it's hard when we don't hear his voice like that of another person. But again, it takes time to recognize and hear his voice as a still, quiet whisper on our hearts. And I think that's something that growing up I feel like, like, oh yeah, you know, like the voice of God, like in our hearts. Like, what is, like, what is a voice that I can hear? Like, that doesn't really make sense. And so I said, need to come to prayer. And just, like, listen. And the more time I spend in, like, silent prayer, the more we're going to be able to recognize these things. We can see God in the world around us and hear him speak through other people and through scripture. But if you want to really know the love of God for you, then you go to the church and you sit face to face with him in silence. It might take a long time to be able to understand his love and know his voice, but there's no other way to know God than to be with him. He stripped himself of all his glory and all his belongings and even heaven itself so that he could become a little piece of bread so we wouldn't be afraid to come to him. Father Mike has this talk that I heard a while back that I really love. He talks about why Jesus is a piece of bread. Because if we saw God in all of his glory, we would recognize how weak and sinful and broken we are. And we would be afraid of that. And we wouldn't come to him. Because we realize like, we're so far from God. And so he humbles himself. He strips himself of everything. If you look at the cross, Jesus has nothing. Nothing except the nails in his hands. And yes, he could have taken himself off the cross if he wanted to. But he chose to be there to save us. So he comes with absolutely nothing. He's stripped of his glory, any of his belongings, everything. Just so that it's just him and the grace. And so we're called to do the same. We're going to go to adoration in just a few minutes. And so don't just show me your accomplishments, your belongings, or even your failures. He wants you, not just the things about you, to come and kneel before him with empty heart and open hands. God doesn't just give us little signs that he loves us, but he gives himself as his love, and that's all we need. So let's go sit face to face with God and know that we're loved.
Thank you, Grace. That was awesome. Yeah, so, uh, quick question. Have you guys done adoration before? 